welcome to Taking Care of You with Mrs. Magoo. I'm Mrs. Magoo. We have a very interesting show for you today. First up on Vision Assist, we're going to be talking about some helpful tips that may make your life a little bit easier and maybe keep you out of that frustration zone. After that, our friend to the show, esthetician Margaret Taylor is back, yay. And she is going to be talking about how we can use oil to cleanse our skin. And she's also gonna be talking about the benefits of jade rollers. Then finally, we're gonna be talking about some foods that can help you lower your blood pressure. So let's get right on over to Vision Assist. Okay, let's talk about some tips that might help to make your life a little bit easier. Now first up, toilet paper. Do you ever get frustrated because you can't find the end of the toilet paper because you can't see it? And you're just spinning, spinning, spinning and not getting anywhere? Try this. So once you do find the end of the toilet paper, and you will, when you've taken what you want, you're going to take the end of the toilet paper and you're going to put it inside the cardboard tube of the toilet paper. That way, the next time you go to use it, it will be right there. This is also very helpful in preventing kids and pets from taking the end of the roll and running around the house with it. Okay, next up, are you not quite sure when your microwave needs to be cleaned because you can't see all the splatters or the baked on food or the buildup of grease? Try this. So I have a microwave safe bowl here and in this bowl I have put one cup of white vinegar and one cup of water. I'm going to put it in my microwave and I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. Now the steam that's created from that will loosen up any stuck on food, any grease or any splatters. Okay the timer has gone off so I am going to remove the bowl from uh, the microwave. I'm wearing pot holder gloves just because the bowl after being in there for five minutes is gonna be pretty hot. If you want, you can just leave the bowl sitting in there until it cools off and then wipe everything down. But for now, I'm in a hurry to clean my microwave, so. I have a microfiber cloth here. Now everything's all loosened up, so all I have to do is go over the bottom. Everything comes off so easy door here and there you go a nice clean microwave how easy is that do you have problems sometimes cutting your food because you can't see where the sharp end of your knife is well you know you could always take the knife and run it across your finger and if your finger bleeds well then you know I found the sharp end of the knife but you know what try this tip it's less painful and it doesn't require any bandages so how can you tell which is the sharp side of your knife? Well, it's pretty easy. You either take a fork or a spoon and... Can you hear that? That is the sharp edge of the knife. It has a different sound and a different feel to it. This is the smooth end. This is the sharp end. So that way you'll know which end of the knife you want to use to cut your food. Happy dining. So next we're talking kitchen trash. You know, sometimes when I'm preparing a meal, I'm spending so much time throwing pieces of this or pieces of that in the wastebasket. In my house, the wastebasket is underneath the kitchen counter, underneath the sink. So every time I have to throw a piece of trash away, I have to bend over, open up the cupboard door, throw the trash in the wastebasket, and it's dark underneath there. So half the time I miss. So then when I go to empty the trash, I have to pick up all the pieces of stuff that never made it into the wastebasket to begin with. So here's a little tip that can help. So you're going to take a bowl uh, or a little bucket, any kind of container that you want to use, and you're going to leave it out on your kitchen counter. So instead of constantly going to the wastebasket, you're just going to pour, uh, put the trash in that little bowl. Then at the end of the meal, instead of this, 20 trips to the trash barrel. You can do this. Take my trash pail off the kitchen counter and go to the trash barrel to empty it once. Okay, next we're talking leftovers. Here's kind of a neat way to store them. 
So I have some leftovers here. I just left them on the plate. This way I don't have to search for Tupperware or a storage container to put them in. And here I have a disposable shower cap. You can get these at the dollar store. I think I got 200 of them on Amazon for $5. I'm simply just going to cover my plate. And then I'm just gonna put it in the refrigerator like this. So now I'm ready for my leftovers. I'm simply, I found my plate in there. It was very easy to find. The shower cap is clear so I could see what's on the plate. You know, this way I didn't have to look through a bunch of Tupperware or storage containers to find out where my leftovers were. And you know, a lot of times, even when you do open a storage container, it, you might not be able to see what's in there. So you might have to smell it. And if something in there has gone bad, it's a very unpleasant experience. So now all I do is I take my shower cap off. I pop this in the microwave and I'm good to go. And plus, I have one less Tupperware container to clean. So you can't beat it. And finally, we're talking toothpaste. I have trouble getting toothpaste on my toothbrush because I can't really see the toothbrush all the time. So I end up with a lot of toothpaste blobs in my bathroom sink. So here's a quick little remedy to that. I'm going to take some toothpaste and I'm just gonna squirt a little bit on my finger. Then I can take the toothbrush and scoop it off my finger and start brushing. Or I could just take the toothpaste on my finger, put it in my mouth, and then start brushing. Now, um, many years ago, I had a broken arm, so I could only use one hand. So I came up with this technique. I just took the toothpaste and I squirted some in my mouth and just started brushing. Now this option's great only if you are the only one that uses that tube of toothpaste because you wanna keep all your cute little germs to yourself. Okay, next stop, Margaret Taylor is here and she's gonna be talking about oil cleansing and jade rollers. So lately I've been reading a lot about different skincare techniques and I had some questions so I thought, you know what? I will ask Margaret because when it comes to skincare, Margaret Taylor is a real know-it-all. <laughs> Margaret Taylor, welcome back. Great to see you. Thank you for having me again. Margaret Exciting. is an esthetician and she is also the propri proprietor of um, Nails Etc. Day Spa right here in beautiful downtown Ipswich, Massachusetts. Now there was two things I wanted to focus on today, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start off with oil cleansing. You know, I see more and more um, articles about it. Um, I see lots of oil cleansing products. Now, is this kind of just a trend or have people been doing this for a long time? Um, you know, it almost seems counterintuitive. If you want to clean your face, you want to get rid of the oil. So why would you want to put oil on your face when you're trying to clean it? Um, oil is very slippery and can be very effective in moving the corneum. That's what you're trying to get off the pollutants. Now, what's the corneum? The corneum is the outer layer of the epidermis. Like, it's like dead skin, in dead other words? Dead skin, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, just crusty dead skin. The oil will loosen it up and help to move it away. Oh. And then the germativum, the underneath layer, will make new skin brighter and tighter. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, is it true that oil gets rid of oil? Yes. It'll attach itself to debris and oil and then slough it away. Okay, so if you're gonna go the um, oil cleansing route when you're cleaning your face, mm -hmm. you want to use a product that's specifically designed for that. Like in other words, I wouldn't use olive oil or I wouldn't use avocado oil or safflower oil or something like that because right. are, are they just too heavy or? It's the formulation, it's what they do to the oil, how they process it, that makes it work on skin. Mm -hmm. I just bought some, I've been doing this for a couple of weeks and I really like it. Mm -hmm. um, I got some oil cleanser online and I did notice, you know, it's specifically made to, to, for your face. Um, it is thinner than, let's say, olive oil or avocado oil or even like coconut oil. So, do you sell the um, oil cleansers at your spa? Uh-huh. Oh. It's made for sensitive skin. It's made for all skin types. Okay. And it's a personal preference. Some people like a gel cleanser, some people like a cream cleanser. Mm -hmm. There's a heavy or a light clean, a cream. Mm -hmm. And now there's the oil. It's another option okay. to your personal preference. Mm -hmm. I think it's very nice, especially in the winter. Mm-hmm because you have a lot of dry skin in the winter. So oil cleansing is good for any skin type, even oily skin? Yes. Really? Yes. 
what is the difference between, let's say, washing your face with regular uh, foaming cleanser and, or oil? Do you ha do, is it a different technique to cleansing your face with oil mm -hmm. than regular cleansers? I don't, I, the technique is the same. I tend to leave the oil on a little bit longer. And the longer you leave your product on your skin, the more effective it's going to be. You have to give oh. product time to work. You can't just oh. put it on and take it off. It's not magical. You put it on, you let it work, and then you remove it. So let's say I put the oil on and then I just brush my teeth or something. What would you say, like two minutes? That's yes. long enough yep. to leave the yep. oil on? Yes. Okay, so once the two minutes is up, I've left the oil on my face. How do I remove it? Do I just take a face cloth and, you know, no. go like this and no, scrub no, no, it no, off? No no, 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 no. No? No. The face okay. cloth wet is too heavy and you, you shouldn't be moving the skin that much. You have elastin and you need to preserve it. And if you stop manipulating it up and down, it's going to sag. It's going to cause sagging. So it's going to really kind of, because you know, it's true, when you have a wet face cloth, it does get kind of heavy. So yeah. you're removing that elastin and do those ever come back? No. Oh, well, that's, okay. So really that's part of the reason why your skin gets loose. You want to preserve that. So yeah. you don't need whatever little elastin you have left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what, I have um, two sponges here, too. Now, would you prefer these over a face cloth? Oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Because these sponges, um, Margaret, has, Margaret has them at her spa. You can get them online. You can also get them at the drugstore. So maybe if you could just demonstrate on Beulah here using these two sponges, like how you would remove the oil. So you would have the oil, put it on, leave it on for two minutes, mm -hmm. and then you emulsify with water, and then you just work it around very, very gently okay. around your face. And then you take the two sponges, one in each hand, yeah. and you just gently, gently, gently. The key is gently. Gently, yeah. gently, gently. And then down. And then you can always, for a little second rinse, you can roll the sponges and use the other side. Oh, okay. And if you have both hands going, and just be really loving with the facial skin, because it has to work really hard. Yeah. And, and um, you want to take care of it. Very, very gently, and then you're not you're not pulling and pushing and pulling and pushing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. great. Um, so you know, give oil cleansing a try today, especially as you said in the winter. I, I've been doing it for a couple of weeks, and I really like it. Um, my skin just feels a lot more hydrated than if I use a a, a cleanser or um, I never use a bar of soap, but I know a lot of people do. It's good to change up products. Is it really? Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. It's good to try something different mm -hmm. all the time. You have your favorites, but it's good to introduce a different method. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next topic I wanted to cover was jade rollers. I've been reading a lot about them lately. How are they beneficial to your skin? They're very cool. Um, they move lymph tissue to your lymph nodes, mm -hmm. and that tissue gets flushed in the lymph nodes. And if the lymph nodes can't handle the bad that's in your lymph tissue, then it sends it off to your immune system. Yeah, show people Everybody, where your, your lymph, lymph nodes, nodes are. will be like right here, there's some under here, and there's some along your collarbone. Mm -hmm. So you want to activate the neck first, bringing fluid down. So basically what you're trying to do is push any of this fluid towards where your lymph nodes are yes. so th the fluid can drain. This is fluid that's built up, maybe has toxins in it yes. and, and other nasty yes. things. Yes, yeah. yeah. And okay. when the node can't help it, it calls in onto the immune system goes into other places. So you don't want it to go other places, right? You there want to get rid of it. There are a couple of there are a couple of things that happen before the immune system gets called into play. Mm -hmm. But you want to keep it moving. You right. want to keep it healthy. Yeah. So your heart pumps blood around your body all the time, mm -hmm. which is great, but your lymph doesn't have a pump. It has different oh. mechanisms in your body that help to move the lymph tissue. Okay. But by 
giving it a little booster. They are lymphatic drainage massages, mm -hmm. um, and that's to move the tissue so you don't get a lot of swelling, so that you can maintain a healthy body. Yeah. Okay. I see it very much when somebody's laying on the table and I'm massaging their face, they magically lose all the wrinkles, the lines, the expression. You're moving tissue. So you make three passes on your neck. Is there a certain pattern they should be doing it? You want to go down. You okay, so you started down. with the neck and you're going and down. you're going down. Three passes, and then where do we go? Then three, keep going three all the way around until you get over here. And then you'd start with your jawline, mm -hmm. and you'd go up here, up to your hairline. Okay. So there's a couple ways of doing it. You can just keep going up to your hairline three times. Then you move into here, right in here. This muscle can get very heavy and tight, so mm -hmm. you want to relax that muscle. Then you move in a little closer to your eye, always going right out to your hairline. Because that's now, where the lymph node is, so yep. that's going to help it drain. But and you always want to be moving up. Moving up. You never want to be pulling down. Well, now that I've done this side of my face, I can turn and go down. Oh, okay. I can turn and go down. If you have more time, mm -hmm. you definitely can turn and go down. Mm -hmm. When there's, oh, can I see your roller? Yeah. Your roller is actually. Now, see, I have one here. It's not as nice as hers because this is totally manual. It doesn't vibrate. Um, so there's a, a smaller end for your eyes and then the larger end is for your face. But now this was $10. I'll use hers to demonstrate. You just press it inside your eye like that. Mm -hmm. And there's a little pressure point in there. That's gonna help to increase the circulation a little bit. And then you come over right to the side. And you do that three times on the top and underneath. A lot of people collect fluid here because the circulation around the eye isn't as good. It's a refined tissue and you can get dark circles. So would that, would the jade roller help you get rid of some of those dark circles? It should. Really? Yeah. Okay. You should use it three times a week. With the, the, the thing is if you use it three times a week, 30 days, you should look years younger. Okay, okay. So you have to be consistent with consistent. it? Consistent. Absolutely. You go up the bridge of your nose, you loosen these muscles that get very tight here and push back into your hairline, and then drag it over to this point here. Okay. Um, I keep mine in the freezer because naturally, jade is a very cool stone. It feels awesome mm -hmm. on your face, I mean, because before you were showing on my face, I'm like, oh my gosh, that feels so good. Yeah. Um, so I kept mine in the, ref or the freezer, um, but you had suggested maybe not to do that you want to keep it handy, because if you make too much of a job about having to go downstairs into the freezer, come back upstairs, you, for me, I would lose interest. I, so <laughs> You really got my number, because actually I was going to use it today, yeah. but I just said, you know what, I don't have time to run downstairs and get it out of the freezer, so I'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're basically saying keep it simple, because okay. if you don't, you're just not going to do it. You're, you're not, not going to stick with it. Whatever. Just like this one. The eye, I, I, I don't even want to take the time to change the eye one, whereas this one, the simplest one, is the handiest one. And if you put a little pressure here and move it out, you're, it's very good for your sinus area. Oh, and really? Even though this is room temperature, this side of my face is very cool. I can almost feel the circulation. Really? Just from doing yeah. it on that yeah. side of your face? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting that it'd be good if you had sinus issues, too. Yeah, I notice the difference. Absolutely. Really? The difference. Well, because you figured that's just sinus stuff. It's just a buildup of fluid. It's just a buildup of toxins and fluid, and you want to move them. Because you move them into places where they'll get taken care they'll of. They'll get drained. Quicker. Yeah. They'll get over there, but it mm -hmm. may take a long time. Oh, okay. So really, using a jade roller, you think it's it's a worthwhile investment, you know, as far as the money and the time? Oh, definitely. Really? Definitely. Okay. Any kind of uh, anything that you do to help your body to maintain healthy blood, healthy fluids, it's all accumulative. Mm -hmm. Any little thing. If you do it once a week, it's going to be better. Than better than nothing. Yeah. yeah. 
So when you're doing um, the jade roller, so what would be, you would wash your face first. You always want to start with a clean face, mm -hmm. okay? I would mist your face with a lotion, a misting lotion. Mm -hmm. Or if you didn't face, have that, could you just do water? Yeah, or? make sure your face skin is wet. Okay. You and then you skin. would either apply your favorite oil or a serum. Okay. A serum. And just a pat it where you want it. You want it wet because it, it permeates better with the water. Cells need water, a lot of water. Yeah. Uh, so what are some uh, water-soluble uh, oils? I know jojoba, a jojoba oil is one of them. Yeah, that's, that's probably the best. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. But I wouldn't put it, you know, heavy. You don't want it too heavy. Right. You don't want too much. Yeah, you just want to thin Because then you're going to have to wash it off. And right. It's expensive. You want something you're going to put on, leave it on, wear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put it on at night, maybe. Oh, well, okay. So just a very, just a very thin layer so you can get that uh, jade roller moving. So, Margaret, thank you so much. That was really great information. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, they can call Nails Etc. Day Spa. It's on 32 Market Street, downtown Ipswich. Our phone number is 978-356-9491 for a free consultation on your skin type, your skin condition, and procedures that will benefit a healthy skin. Margaret, I hope you can come back soon. Be a pleasure. Great. <laughs> Coming up next, we are talking about foods that can help lower your blood pressure. High blood pressure can be very dangerous. It can cause strokes, it can cause heart attacks, it can cause aneurysms, and it can cause cognitive decline. Oh no, we don't want that. Now, when we think about changing our diet to help lower our blood pressure, usually the first thing that comes to mind is um, lowering your intake of salt, uh, which is very, very effective. Also, lowering your intake of processed foods because processed foods are loaded with salt. But you know, there are some foods that can help as well. We want to be looking for foods that have a high content of magnesium, calcium, potassium, uh, high fiber, and protein. Now, first up on the list is red beets. That seems to be everybody's favorite way to, um, or it's a very popular way. Um, to help your blood pressure. Um, you know, they, you can get red beet juice in supplements, they have it in gummy form, but really the best way to get it is from the actual vegetable itself. So beets are very high in nitric acid, which can help open up your blood vessels, reduce inflammation, and therefore lower your blood pressure. Now, you know, I never used to like the taste of beets, but I forced myself to eat them because I knew they were good for me. I think I used to do the, the jarred pickled beets and it came to the point that I basically was holding my nose, putting it in my mouth and trying to swallow it without tasting it. But I ran across a, um, a recipe for roasted beets and you know what? They're pretty good. They're not that bad. Um, but you can also juice your beets, you can also boil them, however you choose to eat them. But uh, in a few minutes, I will give you the recipe on how to roast your beets. It's very, very easy. Okay, the next food group is leafy greens. So leafy greens include turnip greens, romaine lettuce, kale, um, spinach, arugula. These colorful vegetables have nitrates, which can help lower your blood pressure, but they are also chock full of potassium. And potassium can help your kidneys rinse all the salt out of your system. Then there's bananas. Bananas, again, have a lot of potassium in it to help rinse that salt out of your system. Um, medical sources say that you should have approximately 4,700 milligrams of potassium every day. Now, a banana has 470 milligrams of potassium. Uh, another food that's high in potassium are avocados. Now, an avocado has 970 milligrams of potassium. So those are nice and rich in potassium. Now, other foods high in potassium are sweet potatoes, tomatoes, melons, 
beans, and mushrooms. Now another food group is oats and oatmeal. Oats contain a specific fiber called beta-glucan. Now this can help lower your blood pressure and also lower your bad blood cholesterol. Now let's talk salmon. Salmon is high in vitamin D and also omega-3 fatty acids, which can help reduce inflammation, lower your bad cholesterol, and lower your blood pressure. Now, olive oil also is loaded with these omega-3 fatty acids that are so good for you. So that's another thing you might want to try to help reduce your blood pressure. So pistachios. Pistachios are my favorite. They are loaded with potassium, magnesium, and healthy fats. Now, these can help your blood pressure by preventing blood vessel tightening. They keep those blood vessels nice and open, so here again, your blood can just flow right on through. If you have a serving of pistachios every day, maybe a third to a half of a cup, I think you'll really find that it helps your blood pressure. Okay, so let's see how we can roast beets. So roasting beets, the first thing you wanna do is set your oven to 400 degrees. You're gonna take your beets and you're gonna cut the green part off, but you wanna leave a little bit, like a little stump there, so you have something to grab onto. I have put them on a piece of aluminum foil and I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, some salt, some pepper. Those things are optional. If you wanna just have them plain, that's fine too. So I'm gonna take my aluminum foil and I'm just going to loosely wrap them up. Now I have them on a baking sheet, but I put a piece of foil on the baking sheet as well, because that's just in case some of the beet juice leaks out, you don't have a horrendous mess to clean up. So you are going to leave the beets in the oven for like 50 minutes to an hour. Just take a fork and stick it into the beet, and if it goes easily into the center of the beet, that means that it's done. You're gonna take them out of the oven and you're gonna let them cool. And then you're going to peel them. Now, the skins will come off really, really easy. A lot of times I just take a paper towel and wipe the beet and the skin comes off or you can run it under the, uh, the kitchen faucet or you can use a peeler if you want, but they come off very, very easily. So then you can take your beets, you can chop them up, you can put them in a salad, you could throw some in a smoothie, but you know what, no matter how you use them, your heart will thank you for it. So try and incorporate one or more of these foods in your diet, because really we wanna keep those blood pressure numbers down, down, down. And don't forget about exercise. Exercise is wonderful for your blood pressure. So that's all the time I have for today. Our quote of the day is, often when we think we're at the end of something, we're actually at the beginning of something else. That was said by Fred Rogers. You know, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you everybody for spending some time with me today. I hope you had some fun. I hope maybe you learned something too. And please don't forget to take the time to take care of you. I will see you next time. Bye for now. Hey everyone, did you know you could watch Mrs. Magoo on YouTube? Simply go to YouTube and type in Taking Care of You with Mrs. Magoo and watch an episode.